I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to look like that. So this is my buddy's LMT-10 Gravedigger and he keeps stripping out the screws that hold the hub on. And then this whole corner comes completely loose out of here. Turns out it's bad for driving when it's like that. So what we have today is what I believe the best knuckle for the front of the LMT Gravedigger. So let's get the body off, let's get the wheel off, see what we got. With the wheel off, we can actually see what we're dealing with here, and that is just that hub. You can see it's not actually physically broken here, but what keeps happening is there's pins that go down in. This slides in here, and then there's pins that go down through there to hold it in, and there are these set screws that hold the pin to make sure they don't back out. And for some reason, he keeps losing the pins. They screw into this bottom uh, piece of the knuckle here. I'm guessing that is stripped out, and that's what lets them come loose. And that is why we have these SSD parts. Let's get these out of the bag so we can compare them. Look absolutely great. Love the machined, you know, finish. And then they put this in clear anodizing on it. Man, it just looks so great. It also comes with the different screws, hardware that you're going to need, new bearings to put in it. And it comes with their own kind of upgraded pin in here that has a hex in it. And I'll actually screw in down here very nicely. And then we're still going to be able to put that set screw in to make sure that it's in there but we're going to lock tight this whole thing in and that should never come loose again should not be a problem when you compare these to the stock knuckles you can see how much beefier they really are overall dimensions right out here in this part are roughly the same but obviously now we're going to be made out of metal but then this whole piece through here is just noticeably thicker and beefier all the supports that come through here it just looks so much stronger than what the factory pieces do and that's actually part of the reason why i think these are also the smarter choice from an aftermarket standpoint uh, its main competitor is Triel, and it looks like Triel actually did the same design with this hollow inside here instead of this whole solid piece. Um, and I couldn't actually clearly tell from all the materials with Triel if they actually provided the pins or not as well. And mine were missing. So that was a big selling point for me as to why I thought these were probably going to be the best ones. It looks like they had the most material probably the strongest of all the designs that are out there. And the hardware kit that it came with was 100% complete. Now to get this started, we're gonna get this hex off so we can get the axle out. We're gonna get this screw off to get the steering linkage out of the way. And then we should be able to get the bearings in and get this whole thing swapped over pretty quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and get the new bearings installed in here. They just snap right in. And then again, we can compare these hubs side by side. I was wondering if they were actually sided, if there was a left versus a right, but from the factory there is, based on how the design is and how these are actually two separate parts. But it looks like as SSD recreated them, it looks like they're actually not sided. So it looks like these are now universal. All right, now as we reassemble, we're gonna just slide the drive shaft right in through. We're gonna make sure that this does feed on appropriately. It is a little bit of a tight fit over that factory knuckle. I'm gonna start with these pins that go in. And again, now we're doing a bunch of screws into metal. So you're gonna need some Loctite. I use some of this blue medium strength Permatex. I can leave a link to it down in the video description. It is a hex head on there and your standard T-wrench does fit it just beautifully. And then do the same on the bottom side. For the steering linkage itself, I'm going to use the hardware that SSD provided. And you got to make sure that you capture this little bushing was in here from the factory. You need to make sure that that is back in there. You got to get that bushing in there to make sure that there's no slop as you then put the screw itself through. Otherwise, you're going to end up with some pretty sloppy steering. And then the last thing is we still have these small screws here that are going to go in and tighten up against those pins to make to help make sure they don't back out. Now that looks so good compared to what the factory did there. There's no way that's not stronger than what was there before. And it looks really nice. I like it. So I'm going to hop over here, even though this side is not broken, I'm going to hop over here and go ahead and put it on this side as well. I'm going to not put all that on video unless I find something that uh, you need to know about. I have it all mounted up. They honestly look 
absolutely amazing. One thing I'm noticing though is I disconnected the servo horn here. It's actually pretty dang stiff. So I think something here is binding. Um, and I know I had to force these in here between the two tabs here, the steering linkage. So maybe I'm getting some drag in here. Maybe it's actually up here. So what I'm going to do is pop this one back off piece by piece and see if I can tell where the drag is. There's a chance that we need to file these down just a very small amount in order to free up the steering. I think I found the culprit here. That is absolutely like locked up. So what I'm gonna have to do is take this screw out and we're gonna just file down the bottom or the top of this linkage ever so slightly to make sure that it fits better. Look at that, now we're floppy, nice and floppy. So that is much better than it was before. Just took a very, very small amount off on either side and now it moves super free and super easy. So that should do the trick. I may, I'm gonna, as I, send, as I assemble this back together, I'm gonna be very cautious about the dimensions in here as well. And I may just touch these with the file just to make sure that there is no binding there. So taking just a little bit of material off of this linkage, plus a little bit top and bottom of the C-Hub, it moves much, much cleaner now. And man, it still looks so good, doesn't that? I really, really like it. So this is done, finished, wrapped up. There's other stuff that I've done with the Low-C LMT. If you're curious about any of that that I have, it's over here in a playlist to your right. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.